Using moldings and paint is a great way to transform the look of a plain Jane hollow interior door. And it can be done for just a fraction of what a custom door would cost. You'll want to make sure the surface of the door is smooth and undamaged. Fill any chips or dings with wood putty, let it dry, then use a fine grit sandpaper to smooth down any patches so they're flush. Using fine grit sandpaper, lightly sand the entire door surface going in the same direction as the wood grain. Wipe down the door with a tack cloth or a clean damp rag to remove all of the sanding dust. Wash the surface of the door with a multi-surface cleaner and allow it to dry completely. Cover your flooring with a drop cloth or tarp. Tape off the door's hinges and hardware and any surrounding areas that you won't be painting with painter's tape. If you use an interior paint and primer in one, well there's no need to prime before you paint. Semi-gloss is a good choice for doors because it holds up well for frequent cleanings. Here's a tip. Use a short nap or foam roller to paint the flat door face before attaching the molding. You'll be able to cover the surface very quickly and spread the paint evenly. Work your way down from the top to the bottom, let the paint dry completely. Apply a second coat if necessary and let that dry as well. To figure out the placement of the moldings, use a measuring tape and a level to plot out the spacing. For example, two evenly spaced rectangles of molding will create a classic look. But you'll want to place the moldings where the door hardware won't throw the look off balance. Measure 5 inches in from the top and the two sides of your door, and then 6 inches up from the bottom. Mark these measurements lightly with a pencil. and Make sure your lines are straight by lining up the markings with a level or straight edge. Then use the edge of the level to trace the line lightly onto the door with a pencil. Using the doorknob as your guide, measure 3 inches up from the top of the knob and 3 inches down from the bottom of the knob and mark these measurements lightly with a pencil. Use your level to create a straight line and mark these edges onto the door with a pencil. To figure out how much picture molding you'll need, measure the edges of the rectangles and add them up. Plan to buy a little more molding than you actually need in case you make a mistake. To give the door extra depth and dimension, you can paint the inside of the panels. This is a great place to use paint you have left over from a previous project. Or you can use sample pints tinted to whatever color you wish. Don't worry if your edges aren't completely straight. You'll be covering these up with your moldings. Cut the moldings to size with the ends cut to a 45 degree angle. To get the angle right, you can use a power miter saw or hand cut the trim with a miter box and a sharp hand saw. Then sand the edge to fine tune the fit. Paint the molding using a small synthetic bristle or foam brush and then let them dry completely. Apply a thin bead of wood glue to the back of the piece of molding and press it into place, holding it until it becomes slightly firm. Use a level to make sure the molding is straight. Secure the molding with brads using a brad nailer or a small hammer. Fill in any holes in the moldings that may have been left from the brad nailer. Let the putty dry for about 15 minutes then smooth the puttied area until it's flush. Touch up any areas that need to be retouched. Then step back and admire your beautiful new door. For more helpful tips and advice, visit your neighborhood Ace Hardware. And you'll find us online at thepaintstudio.com and acehardware.com.